If you've seen any of those multi-touch demos in which somebody moves, scales, and rotates pictures around the screen, then you've already seen manipulation in action. In the next few minutes, I'm going to show you how to do manipulation in Windows 7 and WPF4, but I'm going to use a different example. We're going to build ourselves a Tangram game. Now, Tangram is a simple puzzle game in which you manipulate certain shapes in order to form silhouettes. So the first thing we're going to do is go into Visual Studio 2010 and an application that I've already got set up. And we're going to add manipulation to this. So we're going to locate the canvas element that's going to sort of host the shapes that we want to manipulate. And we'll add three event handlers. Manipulation starting, which fires when somebody starts to manipulate an object. Manipulation delta, which continuously fires as you manipulate an object. And then finally, manipulation completed, which of course fires as soon as the manipulation is done. I'd also like to point out that these seven paths, well, six paths in a rectangle, are the shapes that we're going to be manipulating. They're already defined here. Notice that right now they just have names, they have a fill, and each one has unique data points. Let's switch to the code behind. And before we get to the actual manipulation event handlers, uh, I want to add some code to the loaded event handler. So this is going to fire once when our application is first loaded. I'm going to iterate through all of the children of main canvas. Now, we actually only want to uh, apply operations to shapes. So I'm going to check each one. And if it's a shape, then we're going to do some special processing. First, we're going to retrieve it as a shape with a cast. And then I'm going to set is manipulation enabled to be equal to true. Now, th that's very important. This is a key property. And it's been added to UI element. And it means that each uh, UI element can be manipulated. Now we're going to create a new transform group. Now we need to create a group because we want to be able to do rotation and translation. So we create a rotate transform, a translate transform. We add uh, each of those to the transform group. And then finally, we set the render transform of the shape to the transform group. Finally, we're going to call a utility method that I've already built called randomize translation. That just scatters the shapes around the screen. Now, I should mention quickly that we could have done all of this except for that randomization. We could have done it all in XAML, but then I would have had to define a transform group and rotate uh, transform and translate transform and set is manipulation enabled to every single shape. And by looping through the shapes, uh, it's just a little more convenient in this case to do it in the code behind. So let's take care of those event handlers. Now, manipulation starting gets called as soon as the user touches the screen to begin a manipulation. And in this case, all we need to do is set the manipulation container to be equal to the main canvas. Now, manipulation delta gets fired continuously as a manipulation occurs. And so the first thing we're going to do there is to retrieve the original source of the manipulation. So in this case, it's going to be one of our seven shapes. And we're going to check for null. And then we're going to pull out that transform group that we added to each shape in the loaded event handler. So we pull out the transform group. And then I'm going to just go ahead and paste in some code here uh, to pull out the rotate transform and the translate transform that uh, I also defined earlier. Then I'm going to set the center point of the rotation, center x property of rotate transform, to the midpoint of the element. I'm going to do the same thing for uh, the center y property of the rotation transform, of course, based on height. And then I need to set the angle of the rotate transform. Right? And so the angle, I can uh, adjust the existing angle by using the delta manipulation property. Uh, actually, the rotation property of the delta manipulation that comes from our event handler. All right, so we've taken care of rotation. Now let's do translation. Here, we just need to uh, adjust x and y by the delta manipulation dot translation dot x and delta manipulation dot translation dot y. Finally, there's the last thing we need to do here is set the handled property to true. Now let's wrap up by implementing the manipulation completed event handler. 
Now in our case, we can actually borrow some code from manipulation delta and paste it in there. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to um, check where the manipulation finishes in terms of angle and then we're going to snap it to a nearby angle. Uh, this is simply to make things easier on the user. When we're manipulating these shapes, it kind of helps to have a snap effect uh, to get the uh, various angles of the shapes lined up a little easier. All right, so we actually check a Boolean value snap to angle to determine whether we even want to do this. And I've got a utility method um, that is going to take care of that for us. So we just adjust the angle by the result of my utility method get snapped angle and we should be good to go. I should point out that you don't always need to implement the manipulation completed event handler. I'm only doing it because I want to take an action once the manipulation has completed. Let's see how we did. Now, you'll note that I can move multiple shapes at the same time. I can rotate them. They'll snap into position. And by the way, I should mention that uh, manipulation supports scaling as well, but I've disabled it because in this game we wouldn't want our pieces to grow or shrink. So I'm just recreating that silhouette that I see in the corner, manipulating my shapes into position, and I can even see how I did by checking the result or checking the answer in the corner.